Okay, hi guys. So one of the questions that often comes up with uh, these World War II helmets, when there's stains inside them, is uh, is this blood or not? And of course, people love to assume that any th any stain inside a helmet is blood. This particular helmet that I showed in another video about uh, Polizei Regiment Number no. 19 in in France comes from a family, and the story that they had is that their uh, great uncle had killed a German soldier and buried him, and that this was the soldier's helmet, and this is the soldier's blood. Now, I find that these stains are they're kind of convincing, and that they really do look like a fluid splashed around inside the helmet, but they're also very black, you know, and is this blood, or is it oil, or something else that fell on the helmet? So now we're going to try to find a scientific response to the question. Here I have these uh, Blue Star Obti tests that were given to me by a friend in the police. I've never used these before, I just read the, the guides online. And um, so these are supposed to detect uh, human and primate hemoglobin, and it also says they can be positive for some other animals, horses, weasels, and uh, some strange things. And uh, we'll do a double test. Here I have an old sample of my blood. I honestly don't even remember uh, how old it is or in what situation I made it. I think I cut my finger or something. Anyway, so this will be uh, evidence of real human blood that's already at least 10 years old or so. And we'll see if it's positive and we'll also see if this is positive. So this one has a K like Kleenex. So. So according to their guide, you're supposed to rub the blood. I'm really not sure this is going to work well with old hardened blood, but let's try. So that's for the Kleenex. And now for the helmet, I'm going to be a bit more gentle. We'll go over here where there's the biggest stain and just rub it a bit. Okay. And now in the guide they say that for old blood you're supposed to wait uh, up to eight or 12 hours or something. So we'll just let this uh, rest and do the rest tomorrow. Okay, so here we are the next day and let's see uh, what this is gonna look like. So this is the K test for Kleenex. So they say you're in the instructions, you're supposed to break off the tip and then put three drips on this thing here. It's kind of like a COVID test or a pregnancy test, so one, two, three. So that's for the Kleenex with my blood on it. And now for the helmet, three drips as well. And then you're supposed to wait three to 10 minutes. So let's wait a few minutes and see what happens. Okay, here we are 10 minutes later and uh, both the tests are negative. The C means control, it shows the test worked. And if there's human hemoglobin, the T is also supposed to be marked. And here you see in both cases, the T isn't marked. Uh, so this means theoretically that there's no hemoglobin or human hemoglobin in either one of these tests. So what does it mean for the helmet? It doesn't mean anything because as we know, here we have my blood on this Kleenex and the test says it's negative. So even though I know it's my blood, so this doesn't tell us anything about the helmet. Um, what the police told me is that this test is very sensitive for human blood, but that it needs quite a large quantity of blood to become positive. So now we know this test uh, apparently isn't good for this very old blood or something. It's so dry that none of it goes into the sampling or something. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, the good thing, the good news is that the police uh, also gave me a second test. So we'll get rid of these. And they gave me this second test here that is not very specific for human blood. Uh, it'll become positive for any type of hemoglobin, including animal blood. But the good thing 
is that uh, even a very, very small quantity of hemoglobin will make the test become positive. So we're going to try to do this test right now. So you're supposed to take a swab, a bit of water, <clears throat> then rub the blood. And if it's positive, this is supposed to turn green immediately. So let's see if it works. Nothing happens, even though I know that this is my own, my very own blood. Let's try to be a bit more aggressive here. So still nothing happening, it doesn't turn green. So both tests are negative, even though this I know is my very own blood. So since this second test is also negative on my own blood, I'm not going to risk putting water inside this helmet and I'm not going to do the second test for the helmet. So what does this tell us? It tells us that these tests that are used by the police apparently are designed for blood that's more recent. And for this blood that's something like 10 years old, it's obviously not working. And this, if it's blood that's 80 years old, well then I guess it would work even less. So this shows that science isn't easy. Um, you can't just come and, you know, put a little spray and say, oh, it's positive or negative. Um, this is what's used in actual crime scenes by the crime scene investigators of the police. And you can see that we can't figure out, even using these tests, if it's actual human blood or not. So uh, if I can figure out something else uh, to use in the future, we'll try doing the test again and I'll make a video about that. For now, we can see that it's hard to know if, uh, if it's blood or not in these old helmets. Okay, so I may have spoken too fast because, um, come closer, uh, when you look at this test now, it is very slightly green, which means positive. This one I did on my own blood. This second test here, I really like rubbed it into the blood and you can see that now the blood did become greenish and the test also became greenish. So I really had to rub hard for this to happen. I don't want to rub so hard in this, in this old helmet, but we are going to try to do the test anyways. So we're going to take a new swab, a new test, and a few drips of water. And we'll rub the inside of the helmet and see if it becomes even very slightly green. Nothing visible to the naked eye. Let's see what happens. Well, in this case, both the Q-tip and the, the test seem to remain very yellow. But I don't consider this 100% conclusive that it's not blood inside the helmet for the reasons stated before that I don't want to rub too hard and everything to not damage it. So the tests remain uh, pretty much inconclusive, I would say. Okay, before ending this video, we decided to try to use some fresh blood to see what happens. So I have such a great girlfriend, she sacrificed herself, you see. Okay, so there's a very small amount of fresh blood. And let's see how the tests react to that. So this is a very small amount of fresh blood uh, from my girlfriend's sacrificed finger. And we're going to see what happens when we do the test with that. Oh, it's already dry. Rub it up so you can see the blood. And let's see what the test looks like. Okay, so that in a few seconds turns intensely, intensely green. For comparison, this is the test from my Kleenex. So they have become green now in the long term. And this is the test from the helmet that is still completely yellow. Okay, so actually now a few minutes later again, this is the Q-tip and the test that I used to rub the helmet. And you can see that the test remains yellow with very slight greenish tint. 
uh, but the Q-tip on the other hand became quite frankly green. So apparently the test is positive after all, even though it took a few minutes to become uh, positive. I guess it's only slightly positive because only a very small quantity of, of hemoglobin uh, came off the inside of the helmet here. But I don't see why else it would become green if it wasn't actually positive. Maybe some uh, viewers who are more experienced with using these things on an everyday basis can say their opinion. But I would conclude that apparently this proves that there is some hemoglobin uh, in this helmet. And uh, we can reasonably say, considering the history of the helmet, that then it's probably some human blood inside. That doesn't mean that all the rest of the story is true, of course, but it certainly does give it some credence. So I hope you guys found all this interesting and uh, see you in the next video.